All right, last video, we got the basic frame done. So today let's uh, finish up the X gantry, uh, the frame for the enclosure and get the floors done. Let's go. Wouldn't you know it, my uh, electric typing arm just showed up a month late. So that's unfortunate, but uh, let's get this opened up here. I was planning on mounting it here on my welding table. And would you look at that? Mounting holes line up perfectly. Awesome. I'll have to get some proper mounting hardware, but I found something that'll work here. All right, I moved it over to the other side of the machine. Made sense as the cord comes off this back and I can see the display when I'm using it. It looks like it'll have pretty good range over the whole table. And I'm really excited to finally get to use this here in a minute. All right, let's have a look at the side plates that PCBWay manufactured for me. PCBWay has generously sponsored all the custom aluminum parts for this project. You may know of PCBWay as a one-stop solution for PCB manufacturing, but they also offer a wide range of other manufacturing services such as CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. This is a really great service for when you need parts but don't have the manufacturing capabilities in-house, or even just want to save time. I used a total of 33 custom machined aluminum parts for this laser build. 18 unique parts, some with multiple quantities of each. I had the CNC machines to produce them, but ordering them through PCBWay has saved me a considerable amount of time. Ordering was easy. I just exported the step files from Fusion 360 and then drag and drop the files on their website, select the quantity and material. They also offer a number of different finishing options for machine parts. I went with bead blasting and black anodizing and the parts look amazing. It took 26 days to receive the 33 finished parts from the date of ordering. There was some extra processing time because of the finishing options I chose. As I mentioned before, what I find really cool about PCBWay in regards to my project is that when I'm all done, I'll be able to share all my files and just share a link and anybody who wants to replicate this machine can just order the parts and it'll be super easy. Um, so far, I've found a couple little minor tweaks I need to make. Um, but uh, anyways, till then, uh, check out PCBWay.com. Thank you, PCBWay. All right, that's really nice. These are the two side plates for the X gantry. I'm gonna need to tap some holes and stuff. But I think for now, I can just attach them and we'll see how they work. All right, I got some M4 by 14 millimeter screws here. Let's see if we can get this attached to these guide box. I need to cut down my x-axis beam. I'm gonna go slightly long and sneak up on the length of this since I can really only get it once until we get a good fit. So in my workshop, the height limiting factor are these beams that run across the top. So I think I'm gonna make the enclosure the same height as my CNC mill. I think that'll give enough clearance. All right, I got the rest of my extrusions measured out. These should be the final ones I need to cut for the x-axis gantry and for the enclosure. All right, let's tap these four holes real quick. Okay, I wanna test fit this and see how it slides on the rails and make sure everything's square. I've just um, tightened down all the hardware on the frame. So before I put on the base, and move along further, I want to make sure that this is everything square and this slides well. Well, it seems like it slides pretty well. While I had this saw out, I went ahead and cut the extrusions for the enclosure. These two were full length at 1000. Cut these two down to 960 and four at 700. Next, I need to cut off a little of these HGR 15 rails. I've marked them out and I'm gonna take them outside and use the angle grader to cut those off. All right, nice. I got those cut to length and they should be ready to install. I have T-nuts pre-installed on these rails. So let's see if we can slide them on here.
All right, both of the rails are attached. Now I need to, I think, remove those side plates uh, so I can tap a few holes and then get this officially installed. Let's try out this new tapping arm. All my holes are tapped. Uh, M5s and M3 on this one. Um, I gotta say, using that tapping arm was really nice. Uh, tapping's always been a chore, but that actually made it pretty fun. So, I think these are ready to go ahead and get them installed for real this time. Before I put these plates back on, I don't want to forget to add these grease inserts to the outside of the block so I can access them. Once these plates are on. All right, let's get these plates installed for real this time. I'm ready to install this X beam. It's much heavier this time with the linear rails on it. I've got eight M5 by 20 screws in my pocket and I've stacked up some boxes here, which I think will keep it about the right height for this side. While well, I try to do it from over here. And you can see the blue tape where I've added the T-nuts that I'm going to need. Let's see if I can slide it in here. Right there. All right, it's loosely in there. Let me get those tightened down. I've tightened it down and it feels pretty good. This, this seating heavy feels substantial. Um, much more so than the regular C-beam that I've usually been using, but yeah, seems like it's gonna work nicely. All right, now I need to add all the angle brackets to it. All right, I need to grind off some of the little tabs on the angle brackets before I can put them on this X gantry. So for now, let's go ahead and start building this enclosure. I can start, start getting this together while I have time. Um, my kids are sleeping, so I don't wanna grind right now, but I can start working on this. I've got the vertical bars for the enclosure installed and I've got the top frame ready to go. So let me uh, drop it on there and get it attached. the frame for the enclosures on. Uh, I've got everything attached down except for the, I need to put a couple more angle brackets here, but first I need to uh, grind off those tabs so it'll sit at a 90 degrees on the rail like that. In my last video series, a lot of people cautioned about me using the uh, grinding wheel for these aluminum brackets. So this time, let's try the sander. I just need to wrap up putting on the angle brackets for this x-axis here you can see all the corner brackets I added to the top and the bottom and the back same over here top bottom and back there's a little slot there where I left for some uh, cables to go through I think the x-axis is done it's pretty good still I've got some three quarter inch plywood here that I'm gonna make the floor of the machine with. Get everything all measured out. I'll cut that out with the track saw. And then I have another piece here that I'm gonna use for the back panel. Well, I'm making the floor out of two pieces. It, it could be one, but um, I was just being lazy. Didn't wanna hook up the trailer or remove kids' car seats. So uh, it should be easier to install this way too. All right, let's start cutting down this plywood. I got the measurements all laid out for the this back panel, so let me get this piece of plywood cut. All right, let's see if we can flip this over on its side so I can 
attach these panels from the bottom. I think that'll be the easiest way to do it. All right, cool. Now I'll just put in some uh, angle brackets here to lock this in place from the bottom. I've added some ink corner brackets and then along the bottom on this panel and then I'm just gonna go around and put some wood screws in. All right, the floor is secure, so let's flip it back over. For the back panel where all the electronics will be bounded, I'm gonna laminate it with um, galvanized sheet metal again. So I'm just gonna lay it on here and trace it out, cut it out with some snips. I got both of those cut out, so I just need to glue them on now. All right, let's spray this. Okay, that a couple minutes to get tacky, so let's put them together. Okay, that should work. Okay, so this panel is going to go under here, and the extrusion should hide the seam. Okay, so it'll look something like that. I still, I'm waiting on some corner brackets to arrive and I'll get that mounted in place. I need to come up with a way to mount this monitor and keyboard arm that I bought. And so I come up with a quick model in Fusion and then I get that 3D printed out. All right, my 3D printed adapter is done. And man, the, the prints off this Q1 Pro looks so great every time. So basically, if you see here how this bar is 20 millimeters from this edge, the bottom of the mount will be on this side, so I need the spacer here to bring it out to 20 millimeters out so that it will be in line. So, let's see if we can get this thing mounted. My adapter in the top mount for this. Let's see if it'll go on here, and then we'll figure out where it goes. position all right so I think the keyboard tray is going to go something like here all right cool Let's figure out where this all makes sense to go all right I'm ready to work on the floor um, I have these four steel plates that are quarter inch and they're about the right size, but um, kind of like we did for the plywood, I need to cut out some notches for the corner brackets and they're slightly oversized. So obviously, if you don't have a laser yet, you could do this with an angle grinder and drill some holes. But since I do have a laser, I'm going to uh, get these cut out. All right, I got everything set up here. I have one of the plates in and Got my file all set up, so let me uh, get the work piece aligned and then we'll cut this out. I usually don't cut over the beans, but look at that, it like almost <laughs> cut through. I'm, luck I'm lucky the uh, steel plate didn't, didn't drop from that. All right, the edge finish looks excellent. I just changed one of the protective nozzles left a nice clean edge. All right, cool, let me get this cleaned up and we'll see if it fits. All right, I got the first panel set in place here and it looks really nice. It looks like it's gonna fit perfect. 
I have some holes there where I can attach it with some drop-in T-nuts to the frame. All right, so I guess we have three more to cut out. I guess I shouldn't have pressed my luck with using those same supporting rails again. So back over to Menards, since I know they're gonna be consumable now, and I'll grab me a few more rails. After replacing the rails, I was able to finish the cut and the plate was fine. They're all cut out. Everything looks like it's gonna fit nicely. So I just need to uh, use some drop-in T-nuts and I'll get those all locked down in place. And I'm still waiting on some corner brackets so I can mount that back panel too. Then I think the basic frame will be ready to go so we can start adding all the fun stuff. I've lined the this frame around here with some corner brackets so I can get this panel mounted in. So I'm gonna get that screwed in place now. That back plate is now installed, so we have an area here to start mounting all the electronics. And then on the front here, this is what it looks like. My button head screws arrived, so let's see if we can get all these four plates installed. I've got everything loosely into position, so I just need to go around and snug down all these bolts for the floor panel. The floor panel is all installed and tightened. So cool. All right, that's all we have time for today. I'll leave any product links down in the description. Um, a big thanks to PCB Way again for supporting this project. Also, you should check out this video that Skyfire put out on their YouTube channel. Uh, they go through and break down a full commercial machine and show all the components. And it's pretty cool. Um, I'll leave a link below also. And um, thank you to all my Patreon supporters for making this happen. Thank you guys. All right.